The main character's name is Yu Chonin. She is a modest, beautiful girl who works as an ordinary office worker. Day by day, she tried to live life to the fullest, to enjoy every moment. But one day, coming home from work and coming into a crosswalk, a huge truck hit her. Somehow she woke up and realized she'd gotten into an extra chapter of a web novel she'd read the day before she passed away. Right now, the main character is making out with some guy with white hair. When they finished, Yu Chonin looked at the guy and was amazed because he was Prince Albert Gray. At that moment, memories of the story began to surface in her mind, and she remembered that her character in the story was a common maid. She was also in complete shock and didn't realize what she had just done to the prince. Prince Albert Gray is a man of distinguished appearance and very good swordsmanship skills, in which he surpassed even the masters of the sword. Having such a character, he was able to win the love of all the people, but the king envied the prince and hated him. Besides, Albert was not the king's own son, and the king, whose name is Rostrath Gray, was a eunuch. However, the fact that he couldn't be Albert's father was common knowledge, and it wasn't even hidden. The king suffered from a sense of inferiority and chose a successor who seemed worthless, namely Albert Gray. Albert, who had lost his birth parents, was just a defenseless orphan. Naturally, the king could not have imagined that Albert would have a brilliant future in which all the people would love him. Then the king, whose mind was clouded with hatred and envy of his unborn son, slandered and imprisoned the prince in a tower, into the tower, upon which thirty high magicians had cast a sealing spell. So Albert was deserted, and his loneliness was shared only by his maid, who was also confined to the tower of the... Also, the king wanted to break the prince completely, so he chose Albert a maid who was crazy about him, and that maid turned out to be the protagonist. In addition, the king even gave this maid a magic wand, with which she could do whatever she wanted. The wand is a tool to control Albert's body. It was also the key to get into the tower, so Albert could not even leave or enter the kitchen without the maid's permission, and the prince's whole life was in her hands. First light embraces, then kisses, and even more, the maid used everything to mess with the prince's head. But the prince certainly wasn't a fool. After he skillfully seduced the maid, he managed to get the power of the rod. And a year after his imprisonment, Albert broke out of that tower. Also, all those years he was imprisoned in that tower, he hid his hatred for that maid in order to get the rod. And the first thing he did when he left the tower, he dealt with the maid. Just like that, without making a sound, the maid died a miserable death worthy of a worthless fiend. Watching the prince, the protagonist, I realized that the worthless villain was a foregone conclusion, and she'd moved into the body of Rosa Atias. At that moment, Albert was trying to seduce the girl by asking her if she wanted more kisses. Rosé tried to distance herself from the guy and said that she thought it was a good place to stop, and she didn't understand how she could have moved at the exact moment she was showing the wand to the prince. Approaching the girl, the prince asked her if she would show him this magic wand, but the girl realized that she couldn't just give it away. However, being under the pressure of this beautiful man, she had feelings for him that she couldn't get rid of. So thinking her heart would stop before her head fell off her shoulders, she decided to give the prince the rod. Watching Albert use the power of that rod, she realized that she had just been in this body and was already tempting fate. After a while, being in her room, the protagonist tried to calm down and thought about the fact that she had changed into this body. But if she keeps her composure, she can quite manage it. Besides, Albert has a claim to the throne, so staying near him is like playing the lottery. She decided to make a pact with him. Namely, she would not take away his rod. But on the contrary, she would give it to him and offer to unite. In return, she would ask for guarantees that he would keep her life and provide her with a secure old age. Fortunately, it hasn't been more than a week since the prince's imprisonment, which means it's not too late to change their relationship. Going downstairs, she saw the prince, who immediately asked the maid if she wanted anything else, to which the girl replied that she didn't need anything. Also looking at the guy's smile, she remembered that it was a predator's smile that you have to be careful with. Touching his lips with his hand, the prince thought that the maids just didn't like his kiss, for he thought he was very good at it. Heard it? Rosa again, she began to feel somehow strange, and blushingly told the prince to do what he ought not to do. That left the prince a little puzzled, and he wondered why the girl had come downstairs and what she wanted to talk to him about. At that moment, Rosa took out a contract, 
and immediately put it on the table saying she wanted to make a deal with Albert. When Albert heard that, he realized that the maid probably wanted something in exchange for his body, which surprised the girl a little, since in the affair it quickly came to bed, but in that case he would deal with her quickly, so she should avoid it. Waving her hands, she said she wasn't going to share Albert's bed, no way. But the prince, smiling his hunter's smile to the blushing heroine's face, said he knew perfectly well that she liked him. At that moment, Rosa thought that she was not the maid the prince was used to living with, but a completely different person, and she had no feelings for him. But if she said this to the prince, he would take her for a mad woman. Besides, all she wants right now is to get out of that tower as fast as possible. So the protagonist asked the prince to take a look at the treaty. Looking at this document, the prince was a little surprised, for the girl wanted assurances that he would keep her alive and ensure her a secure old age. The girl also confidently declared that she wanted more than anyone to get Albert out of that tower, so she wanted to help him get out. She added that the prince would only have to give her enough money to live in some village, eat good food, and enjoy her life. In addition, Rose asked Albert to read this contract to the end, as there was a clause guaranteeing that there would be no touching without the consent of both parties. At that moment, Albert was completely bewildered and couldn't believe that the man in front of him was still the same man. He listened to the protagonist say that the moment they kissed, she created that she was doing wrong to the prince, and she realized that she was just getting closer to her deathbed, which surprised the prince a little, and she explained that she thought he might be able to escape someday. And when that happens, the girl must not be able to survive. Albert was puzzled. He didn't understand what the maid was talking about, and what an ordinary kiss had to do with her not surviving. Then he stood up and approached the maid and began to touch her face tenderly, saying that he had liked her from the first time they met. At that moment, Rosa tried to calm herself, as she more than realized that the prince was just trying to seduce her. Also, the prince asked the girl to come closer to him, but she didn't understand why she should do that, and she asked the guy if she was going to kiss her again. Also, she realized that it was an important moment to get the trust of the prince. On hearing this, the prince replied that he certainly wished to kiss her and asked the girl if she did not mind, to which the girl replied that it's not that she doesn't mind, but she realizes he's going to do it because he trusts her. And all he wants to do is see if she reacts to that kiss the same way she did before or not. Albert was a little surprised to hear this and said he didn't know what had happened to Rose but it was as if she had become a different person, to which the girl replied that some people change right in front of their eyes, and that it can happen. Agreeing with the girl, Albert immediately grabbed her by the waist, and looking her straight in the eyes, said that the maids were right. However, he still hadn't checked her, and he would need to do another experiment. And if Rosa doesn't want to do it, she should just say. Then the heroes fell on the bed and began to kiss passionately. However, the protagonist was in complete bewilderment and wanted as soon as possible for it to end. After a while, they finally finished kissing. Rose just lay on the bed in utter bewilderment, glad that it was finally over. At that moment, Albert asked the girl if he could have another look at the contract, to which the girl immediately agreed. Being at the table, the prince wondered how he could be sure that the maid would fulfill the terms of the contract, to which the girl showing him the contract asked him to simply sign it with magic. Hearing this, Albert was a little surprised and didn't understand how the girl knew he had magic powers. Since the protagonist has read the novel, she knows that Albert keeps the fact that he can use magical power in the plan, but he hasn't told a soul about it. So smiling, she replied that she was just very guessing. She also explained to the prince that the reason he wanted to see the rod so badly was because he was going to try to dispel its magic. Grinning, Albert was amazed at the maid's intelligence, and he didn't even know she could think of such an... At that moment, the principal wondered why the maid had decided to show him the magic rod, since there was no profit in it for her. But that the girl worriedly replied that she had just lost her mind over his charms. Albert said that unfortunately his magic doesn't work here, so he needs to study the rod carefully. At that moment, Rosa stood up and approached the prince realizing that it would be on her conscience to fulfill the terms of the agreement, to which the prince replied that if he trusted her, he would have agreed to it. At that moment, the maid began to tremble a little, but she knew not to give in to fear. So she explained to the prince that she had done everything in her power, 
namely to draw up a mutually beneficial treaty, and had even passed the kiss test. So the girl doesn't understand why Albert won't believe her. And if it goes on like this, it'll only be worse for him. The maid began to tell the prince that they were now in the same position, for they were both now imprisoned in this tower. But the girl was willing to accept all the terms if the prince would give her what she wanted. Rosa only needs three things. First, a guarantee that she'll be kept alive when she's released from the tower. Secondly, money so that she can live the rest of her life well and not depend on anyone. And thirdly, immunity, as she cannot touch Albert Albert must not touch her without her permission. So the girl offers these terms to the prince because she knows he can fulfill them. And of course, they'll both pay for breaking them and they'll have to figure out the proper punishment. So it didn't take long for the protagonist to reply that as punishment, they'd have to pay with their lives, which surprised the guy a little. She said that this way, they'd be sure to honor all the terms of the contract. Smiling and looking at Rose, I realized that she was a decent girl, which the girl immediately agreed with and added that she had always been like that. So Albert asked the maid to fetch a quill. After some time holding a quill in his hands, Albert asked the girl if she would not regret it too, for it seemed to him that they did not like his body. To which the girl replied in a calm voice that she thought any passion paled in comparison to fear for her life. Then the protagonist generic, if that they finally managed to sign together this pact, said that she, hopefully they can get along during the rest of their time imprisoned in the tower, where the prince bowed to the girl and said he was counting on it too. The next day the protagonist was doing the usual maid's business. I mean that, in accordance with the contract made yesterday, Albert is now her very powerful employer, and that is why now she is not facing imminent death after her release from this tower. Plus, Albert promised to give her enough money to last her the rest of her life. But until the plan is implemented and you have to take good care of your client. Besides, Prince shouldn't underestimate a well-traveled office worker, so she also knows the plot of this novel as well. However, Rose realized she had missed one very important detail, namely Albert, and she were now like roommates. This morning when she came out of her room and immediately saw the wet prince who apologized as he was a little late due to fencing practice. After seeing this beautiful man, the main character started to go crazy about him. I don't understand why he's walking around like that in the morning. It doesn't matter that he's a prince, he's not alone in this tower, and they definitely live here together. Also ran to the man. The main heroes did not understand how he even managed to get out of here. To which the guy replied something all thanks to the fact that the maid yesterday gave him to study the rod. The guy touched Rose's soft hair, thanked her, told her he was now free to do whatever he wanted on the second floor. The protagonist replied that she had done nothing of the sort, but she immediately turned away as she couldn't bear to look at the prince and simply asked him to at least get dressed. Finally dressed, Albert asked if it was okay to which the protagonist replied that now she liked everything, and he finally looked neat. Also, the maid asked the prince from now on to always expect her in such a way, adding something necessarily. Turning away, the girl didn't know whether to call them roommates, housemates, or roommates, since I'd have to live with a stranger she knew from some web novel. As she pondered, she also realized that no matter how capable Albert was, even he would need time to undo the magic of the wand and the tower. So with a disgruntled face looking at the prince, the maid decided that in order to live to this point without problems, she needed to avoid confronting Albert. So she needs to make them feel comfortable living together. Then she tells him that they need to discuss something, namely she wants to know his preferences. Albert was a little surprised to hear this, as they had only recently signed a contract and the maid was already violating its terms. Then Rose laughed very loudly at what she heard for she only wanted to know what food the prince liked, and she wondered what he was thinking that he thought she was breaking the terms of the treaty. The maid also explained that they would be here together for a day or two, and only she could enter the kitchen. So shouldn't she know at least his tastes in food? When Albert heard this, he replied that he didn't have any particular food preferences, so he told her that Rose could cook anything, which pleased her greatly. She said that tonight's menu would be Korean food, which she loves, also, the reason the protagonist can talk about this kitchen is because this world was fictionalized by the author of the novel. Also, the main character recalled how in her past life when she read this novel, she did not understand how in a romantic fantasy, stylized in the European way, can eat Korean food. Also, looking at her phone, 
The girl didn't understand why there were so many ingredients. But in fact, such a large number of ingredients in this novel are due to the main character named Seo Ina. She is from South Korea, and she is the one who makes Korean dishes out of all these ingredients. And with this, she has been able to win the hearts of all people. At the point in the novel when rumors of Koina spread, Alibert becomes interested in him finding her. And it is from that point that the protagonist finishes this novel. So coming down the stairs, Rosa was very curious how things might work out for those two. While knocking on some door, the girl thought about the fact that Seo Ina was cooking Korean food in this novel, which meant that Albert might like it. But that wasn't her main question right now. Finally, the knights guarding this tower opened the door wondering what happened. To which Rosé worriedly replied that we'll respond at 8 a.m. Monday morning. Once a week, the maid would deliver a report to the king. She would report on how she had abused Albert and detail how broken he was. And at the same time, the king sent her patrolmen and provided her with everything she needed. So passing the report to one knight, the protagonist was glad that the real Rose had already prepared this week's report. Because if she wrote the report, the king would have realized what was going on. But she had to come up with a plan to avoid getting caught in the future. Also felt as if she now had two bosses at once, Prince Albert and King Rostreth. After a couple more days, one of the knights came into the tower carrying some boxes. Finally putting the box on the ground, he said that he had brought everything about what the protagonist had asked for last week. He also added that if she had anything else, she should just ask for it. Upon hearing this, the maid held out a small piece of paper to the knight, saying that she wanted him to bring her more of the food she had written here, which surprised the knight a little, but he immediately realized that these products were needed so that the maids could torture the prince. She explained that she was going to starve him first and then feed him spicy food, and the prince would always be at her mercy. Also, looking the knight straight to show the girl added to be sure to pass this on to his majesty, because she wants to torture Albert properly. Then the protagonist didn't go into the room Albert was in, who immediately praised her for her excellent work. He also asked the girl if she wasn't going to seriously torture him. When the maid heard that, she immediately said she had no intention of doing it, and she said it was so she wouldn't be found out. She actually needed a plausible excuse to ask for such expensive ingredients because she needs to avoid suspicion from the king. So she has only one option, and that is to pretend to be a villain. Rose has read dozens of books in the romantic fantasy genre that feature a villain, but she never thought that this knowledge could ever be of use to her. So, smiling, she asked the prince to wait for a while as he would soon taste the incredibly delicious food. But Albert didn't seem to care. But he said he was looking forward to it. He also asked what kind of food she wanted to cook. And suddenly she's really going to kill him. As he ate, the prince had a feeling that the maid had changed a lot in recent weeks. Because before she was only interested in his body, and now she's trying so hard to cook, and she's like a different person. When the protagonist heard that, she reminded the prince that she had already said it, namely when they first kissed. She realized how stupid her actions had been. Yes, and is that why Albert made a deal with her? She that the man replied that when people suddenly change, there is always a reason for it. Then Rosa realized that even now Albert didn't trust her at all. But it didn't matter much to her, for it would take a little time to prove that she wasn't the old maid, but a completely different person. Besides, she had something else on her mind right now. Then, standing up abruptly, the girl, thinking that she might be rushing things, told the Duke that she had something to tell him, and she was the one who asked him not to fall in love with her. Also, the protagonist realized that in romantic fantasy, as it is known, there is an outdated pattern. Namely, when a girl caught up in the romance changes the plot, she somehow meets the protagonist. Moreover, in the end, she falls in love with her, and it's a cliché, but Rosa doesn't want there to be feelings between her and Albert. Because love with this cold-blooded man could be a tragedy for her. When Albert was eight years old, they tried to poison him for the first time. He was born into an Earl's family that was blood-related to the royal house. But this family only looked noble, and their financial situation was in considerable decline. Then little Albert was quietly eating his supper, but suddenly he began to feel dreadful, which his brothers noticed and ran to him at once. But his brothers smirked and asked him who could have done this to him. While the little prince was making some miraculous recovery, his older brothers fighting over the inheritance ended up killing each other. Even Albert's parents passed away, unable to cope with their illness. 
but Albert thought his life would be better after being adopted by King Rostratus. But life was not so sweet for him, and eventually he was imprisoned in a tower with a crazy maid and lost his position in society. So Rosa asked herself if someone who'd lost trust in people could really love someone. At that moment, the protagonist found similarities between her life and Albert's. As she too lost her parents almost immediately after graduating from university, namely, they were in a car accident. The girl didn't even have time to grieve, no matter how hard it was in front of others. She always pretended everything was fine, but when she was alone, she put even more effort into it. And she loved reading Romans because she wanted to escape from reality and from such a horrible life. She finds herself in a strange situation that she's surprised she can adapt to immediately. But a romantic relationship with Albert is something else entirely. Eventually, the girl realized that they would only hurt each other. So she asked the prince to promise her that he would never fall in love with her. She also explained that her fears may be in vain, but they are trapped in four walls, just the two of them. So she suggests being careful. At that moment, Albert asked Rosa in a calm voice not to worry, for it was out of the question, and he promised the girl that he would never fall in love with her. When the girl heard the prince say this, she was immediately glad, for when she hears the prince say it, she is reassured, and she hopes that his attitude will not change. She also asked him not to forget her reward. At that moment, the prince noticed that the girl seemed to be in a very good mood, but the maid explained that she was just excited to finally be free of this place because she wants to get out in the fresh air, take a walk and talk to other people, and she wants to eat good food and meet a kind and successful man. Besides, if she had a phone and internet, she could tolerate all this, so screaming she asked the prince when he was planning the escape, which left the principal a little confused, and he said getting out of here was no problem. Plus, he was already able to weaken the ceiling spell with his wand. Hearing this, the girl was in complete shock and did not understand when he had managed to weaken this spell, and rejoicing she called him a true genius. Unable to settle down, she Alberta when they can approximately get out of the... To which the prince replied that they would be able to get out in about three months at least, which shocked the girl, and she didn't understand why it would take so long. Albert reasoned that if they left now, they would give the king cause to act. In the novel, Albert only managed to get out after a year, and throughout that time he worked hard on himself and his skills. When the prince was finally able to maximize his powers, he was able to reach out to his men, expand his influence, and fight back against the king. At that moment, Albert stated that he believed that imprisonment in the tower was his chance. A chance to change everything so he would proceed carefully and slowly shade the noose around the king's neck. He also asked the maid to wait a while. He understands how hard it is for her, but she should also realize that Albert needs time. Rose smilingly replied that she understood and asked His Highness not to worry, as she would be happy to wait for that moment. But in the meantime, Albert could do as he saw fit. Time goes very fast in this tower. And yet she had not flown with Albert, and it had passed unnoticed by Rosa. Besides, it was time for Rosa to send reports to the king, which she successfully did, and the king didn't suspect a thing and even sent the food she requested. So I was happy for the girls to realize that now they could finally eat the dish and all that time and had to cook with unknown foods and it was very hard for her. At that moment, she decided to finally start cooking an unforgettable meal that would take away the stress of being cooped up in this tower. After some time, the protagonist was finally able to cook tokpoki, which gave off the most pleasant odor she had ever smelled in her life. Suddenly, she ran straight to the table because she forgot something very important. And that was to add hard-boiled eggs because nothing is better than delicious toppings with poached eggs. But she wondered if Albert could eat such a dish, so she decided to call him at once and see what his opinion of it would be. Albert was a little puzzled and didn't understand what it was, but the girl replied that it was one of her favorite dishes. And as she said, she had prepared something new today. Also, the prince noticed that today the maid seemed to be brimming with confidence, since usually when she carried the food, she looked gloomy. But she explained that she was not very experienced in cooking. Besides, she didn't understand how she was able to properly cook. Even I don't know what kind of food it was. Looking at this dish, Albert was a little surprised, as it was the first time he had ever seen such red food in his life. So he asked their maid to try it first, to which the girl replied that she was all for it and would love to do it. Besides, 
She hadn't eaten Korean food in a long time and even missed it. After eating one bite, she was amazed by the flavor of the dish, and in tears she told Albert that it was delicious, and she was even shocked that she was able to make such a delicious dish. Besides, she lost all her stress after such a wonderful taste, which surprised the prince a little, and Rosa explained to him that she was always stressed where she used to live, and at such times she always ate something spicy. But tokpoki, it's her favorite spicy dish and she hasn't had it in a long time and that makes it taste even better. Also bringing her fork closer to the prince, the maid asked him to trust her and try it, for the prince had not even had breakfast today. After finally tasting one bite, Albert began to wiggle a little, and the girl thought that he did not like the dish, but in fact it was because it was very spicy. Finally swallowed this piece, the prince said it was very spicy. Meanwhile, the protagonist was watching Albert eat her dish, imagining him with cat ears, thinking he was very cute. Suddenly, she just dropped her head on the table, and on rising, she said she was all right. She thought Albert liked her dish after all. When the prince heard this, he was a little puzzled, not understanding how the maid knew all this, to which the girl replied that when the prince was in a good mood, he smiled with the left corner of his lip. Then Albert covered his mouth sharply. He didn't understand how he could be in a good mood. But the girl thought he probably still had a burning mouth because of the sharpness of the... To which the duke replied that it was actually fine. He was also a little surprised at how easy it was to make Rosa happy, which the girl immediately agreed with, adding that it's nothing complicated. And she's happy when she's eating good food and having a good time. And she asked Albert how he was feeling. Because she has noticed that when he has such a delicious dish in front of him, he is no longer sad or dreary. To which Albert agreed saying he wasn't sure he was happy, but he felt much better than before, and he was glad he could finally share a meal with someone. The night Rosa was sleeping peacefully in her bed, she suddenly felt a pain in her stomach, so she stood up abruptly and grabbed her stomach. She didn't understand why her stomach hurt, but she immediately assumed it must be because she hadn't eaten spicy food in a long time. Also from the symptoms, it looks like she's got indigestion, there's no medication, no doctors, and the only way out of this situation Meanwhile, Albert, instead of sleeping, was improving all his skills by reading books and gaining new knowledge. Suddenly, he heard some strange rumbling and decided to see what was going on. Walking through the corridors of the tower, he met the main character who was very surprised to meet him in the middle of the night. She turned around and explained that she was just bored and wanted to do some sewing. However, Albert immediately noticed from the expression on the girl's face that something was wrong with her, which surprised the girl a little and she wondered what was wrong with her face. Suddenly, she fell to the ground and the magic wand fell out of her hands. Albert even started to get a little worried about the maid and asked her what was wrong with her as she looked pale. She was also in a cold sweat, so he asked her to tell him what had happened to her. Holding her stomach and crying, Rosa replied that she had a very bad stomach ache and that she must have eaten the tokpoki too fast. The prince at once realized that it was probably indigestion, but he promised the girl that he would help her. But in order to help the girl, Albert asked her for the rod for a while, to which the girl replied that the rod was around here somewhere. Suddenly she realized that the wand had disappeared somewhere, and it was not here, to which Albert replied that one should just look more carefully, as a magic wand could not suddenly disappear. Then deliver a small needle. The protagonist asks Albert not to worry as she seeks her illness in the way she knows how. But the prince immediately grabbed her arm, not realizing what she was about to do, as it could be very dangerous. Rosé explained to the man that where she lived, to cure indigestion, they pricked her finger with a needle like this. Then it goes away easily. At that moment, Albert started smiling, saying that the girl was right and it was a very effective method, which surprised the girl a bit. After a while, the prince realized that thanks to the maid he had learned something new. He also asked the girl if she was feeling well to which the girl replied that she felt much better now and asked the prince for a napkin to wipe away the blood. Then, grabbing the maid's hand, Albert began to lick her finger, much to the girl's shock. Albert explained it was how they stopped the blood where he lived. Since that moment, the protagonist has not slept a wink, and it's all due to the prince's special skill of seducing people. She didn't understand how someone could just take someone else's finger and start licking it. Besides even thinking about it, Rose felt very strange, and she didn't understand where it was so raised to stop blood. Also, looking at her hand, she didn't realize what Albert was thinking then, so she assumed he was definitely flirting with her. 
suddenly realized they hadn't been together that long, and it could be a cliché like, you can't deviate from the plot. However, she began to speculate that the prince might actually like her. Catching herself on this thought, the girl immediately began to think that she was probably just crazy. It's only a matter of time before a single man and woman fall for each other, especially if the man is as handsome as Albert is. But Rosa didn't want Albert to fall in love with her, so she had to get out of the tower as soon as possible and live a quiet life, and she couldn't get close to him under any circumstances. For several days, the maid determined not to get close to the prince and tried in every possible way to avoid his... So for four days, she just lied to Albert, saying she had urgent things to do so she couldn't talk to him, and she did everything she could to avoid him. Meanwhile, the maid is at the same table with the prince, who was unhappy that he helped the girl stop the blood, and now she probably won't meet his eyes for the rest of her life. He also added that he was just doing a little healing, and she misinterpreted it. Then, trying to hide her tears, the protagonist realized that her attempts to avoid the prince will certainly be noticed, as there is very little space in this tower. But she didn't understand what good it would do and wanted to find another way out. Meanwhile, Albert was once more eating the girl's food and savored its flavor, praising her cooking ability. While Rose was thinking that it would be nice to have someone else here besides them, she suddenly realized that they just needed something or someone to spend more time with than each other. So standing up abruptly and holding a spoon, the protagonist asked his majesty for a pet. She explained her decision by saying that it was just the two of them and they were incredibly bored living alone in the tower. And if Albert would allow it, Rose would find some excuse to get a pet. Albert was a little surprised at the maid's suggestion, and so he pondered the matter for a long time, at the same time as the girl begged him to let her have a pet. The prince finally made up his mind that he could, which pleased the girl, and she stood up abruptly and said that there was no going back now. After a while, he opened the door of the tower, where he informed the maid that her reports had been received by the king. Also with the knight came also some little animal, which was very cute. The man also added that the dress the girl had asked for a few weeks ago was already ready, but the girl was more interested in something for the animal. Knight replied that it was just a kitten wandering around alone without its mom, and he just decided to feed it. Suddenly, this kitten was able to enter the tower which seemed unbelievable to the heroes, as thirty mages cast a sealing spell and he entered the tower as if nothing had happened. The knight, looking at this cute kitten, asked the girl to give him back, and if he was lucky, he would survive. But of course he might run into a big beast and die. But that's nature's way. Looking at this animal, the main heroine found herself in it, because she too, like him, was all alone in her past life without parents so she told the knight she'd take care of the kitten herself. After a while back in the tower, Rosé was very tired as she had a lot of stuff this time, and it took her a long time to bring it all in. Also, the maid ordered a lot of different dresses, and she doesn't even have two lifetimes to wear each one. However, turning around and looking at this animal, the main character didn't understand why she didn't see it as a kitten. This animal is white, has little horns on its head, and it has wings and a tail, and it just stood on two legs. So she assumed that this animal was more like some kind of dragon from some movie, and she also remembered that there was no such thing in the novel. Suddenly this animal began to speak in human language and asked the girl if she could see his true form, ask if she was a mage. Upon hearing this, Rosa was completely shocked and immediately took the little creature and ran up to the prince to show it to him. She was going up so fast Albert thought the tower was going to collapse, but the girl replied that it didn't matter now and started showing him the creature, saying that the guards had brought a black kitten, but she could definitely see some kind of white creature. Plus, she added something unimportant since this creature can speak human. Seeing all this, Albert calmly told the girl that it was an ordinary dragon. Rose was amazed at what she heard since she didn't even know there were dragons in this novel, and she realized that this world was very big. Suddenly, the girl realized that if this baby became her pet, she could finally get out of this tower, deal with the king, fly into the sky, and become a dragon rider. Then began at once to rejoice in saying that this creature was her treasure and asked herself if luck was on her side today. At that moment, Albert asked the girl what shape she saw the dragon in, to which the girl replied that she saw a very nice white reptile with wings and horns. 
which seemed strange to the prince since to ordinary people like those guards. This dragon should look like an ordinary kitten. He also added that there are two types of people who can see the real appearance of the little dragon. First, those bound to him by contract, and second, mages, but Rosa is neither. But still the maid somehow sees this dragon, which surprises the prince. Also, the girl did not understand why she has such an interesting skill, and she thinks it's because she moved into this body. She also suggests that she may have gotten powers from using the wand, which the prince agrees with, adding that it's possible since this tower is shrouded in magic. Albert added that since they now had a dragon, Rose didn't need to nurture it, as it was just a baby dragon, which surprised the girl a little, and she wondered why she shouldn't take care of it. Albert began to tell me that an adult and a baby dragon are not the same thing. When a dragon grows up, it becomes a source of magical power, which makes it so omnipotent that it can cause natural disasters or cross space and time. But the little dragon can't do any of that. He's so weak, he's ashamed to call him a dragon, and he can die easily, which is why to protect themselves, baby dragons usually disguise themselves as kittens. But if he can live for 500 years, he can become an adult, and even after that time, he will have to wait. Because his power will have to awaken first, but most dragons can't withstand such power and die. The prince also added that although dragons do exist, they are considered a myth by many. At that moment, the protagonist weeping asked the man if her pet really couldn't survive, to which the prince replied that there was only one way to do it. Judging by Albert's explanation, this is a very cruel way for a 500-year-old dragon to become an adult. It must endure a period of change all by itself. As few dragons can endure this pain in history, they are rare. Also, according to the prince, the chances of survival increase if you contract with a human and share this pain. But among mages, there are almost no those who would agree to endure unbearable pain. So many dragons can't mature and die. Albert also said that if Rosa was a genius mage, then she better not be interested in dragons. But the girl was more interested in why adult dragons don't help little ones. To which the prince replied that they can't help, and he doesn't think dragons are creatures capable of caring for others. So he thinks it's best to let that little white dragon go before he gets attached, and who knows when he'll die. Upon hearing this, the maid asked Albert in a trembling voice to give her some time to think about it. At the same time, the dragon in the girl's hands was saying that it was very warm, very magical, and very beautiful. At that moment, the girl realized that Albert was right, because she couldn't even take care of him, and if she left him, she would only hurt them both. So she decided she'd better feed him, because a well-fed ghost is better than a hungry one. While in the kitchen, Rose was making French toast for the little dragon who liked it very much. In addition, the maid could not take her eyes off such a lovely animal and asked the dragon, How old is he? To which the dragon smilingly replied that he was 499 years old. Then the protagonist immediately realized that the 500th anniversary was less than a year away, which shocked her. She realized that this baby was about to turn 500 years old, which meant that he might die soon, and if she left him now, no one would take care of him, unless he was very lucky and he was a strong mage. Then the maid asked the dragon how he'd managed to survive all this time, to which the dragon replied that he'd just been sleeping. He began to say that he was a very ordinary baby dragon. He had just found a cave and slept there for 499 years, which shocked the girl, as he had been alone for such a long time in a large and dark cave. The dragon also added that since he's only a year away from growing up, he's decided to see the world before he dies. Besides, he thinks he has no reason to live anyway, but he's very afraid of pain. Then hitting her hand loudly on the table, Rosa first told that her parents were gone too, and when she was left alone, she too began to think that she had nothing to live for. But friends and colleagues brought her out of this state and put her on her feet. With them, the girl shares happy moments and rejoiced in every little thing. It wasn't the grandiose moments that kept her afloat. It was the mundane ones, so she decided she couldn't just abandon this baby to its fate, and she had to do something to keep it alive. Taking this baby in her arms, the protagonist asked its name, to which the dragon replied that it had no name. Then the girl was a little puzzled because she didn't understand what name she could give to such a special creature, when suddenly she got the idea to name him Winter, because he was white as snow, and the dragon even liked that name. 
Then the smiling maid said that Winter didn't know what the meaning of his life was, so she suggested he find it, and he'd finally have a reason to live. Now there's only one problem left, and that's how to break the news to that grumpy Albert, since he probably won't want a dragon as a pet. In the meantime, the prince was studying the magic wand. I'm trying to learn how to control its power. Suddenly he was approached by Rose, who was interested in how he was doing, to which he replied that it was going well, but because of the intricacy of the wand, he was having a little trouble, but he thought he would finish it today. Then the maid asked the prince what he was going to do when he was done, because that time he said they would only be able to escape in three or four months, to which Albert replied that he'd contact his people and they'd decide when it was best to do it. Looking at the man, the protagonist realized that Albert had planned everything, and he is indeed a genius, even his appearance is genius. Suddenly the girl pointing at the prince with her fingers said that he had something on his face, namely his beauty, which surprised the guy a bit where he was left without words. At which point the maid was forced to explain to the man that it was a joke, and she meant that he looked good, which embarrassed the guy a little bit, and he got all flushed. As it was, the girl was very happy that they would be able to escape soon, and she was even a little worried, which surprised the guy a little, and he wondered what she was going to do after she got out, to which the girl replied that she just wanted to live in a decent town, the life of a common landowner, in a small well-being built-in town near the capital, buy lots of land and rent them out, and for herself she wants to find a small one-person home. She's going to do all this so she'll never have money problems, and she also wants to travel, to get on a ship and go on a trip. There she wants to find a famous restaurant and order the whole menu, and after the main courses, of course, she needs a dessert, because she is crazy about sweets. So Rosa decided she'd just hire a talented pastry chef to make the most delicious desserts for her. Hearing this, Albert said in a calm voice that her desire was more earthy than he thought, and the girl agreed, adding that she liked the beauty, but in fact, such an ordinary life, though happy, was the hardest thing of all. The maid also added that she can't call either his or her life ordinary, but she just wants to live to enjoy the little pleasures. Then the girl asked Albert what he was going to do after his release, but the principal didn't even know what he wanted and simply replied that he had to become king in order to survive, which surprised Rosa a little, because if you think about it, their dreams for the future are very different. Since Albert is still a prince and the protagonist of this novel, and Rosa is only a villain and a minor character, quite naturally, they don't see each other in their future. So she realized that Albert's life would be full of hardships unlike hers. She also added that since their paths will be parted someday anyway, the girl told the prince that she had made the decision that Winter would live with her, since she would have a boring and lonely life. The duke was surprised to hear it, and didn't even realize at first who the maid was talking about. So she was forced to explain to him that she had named the little dragon Winter, which astonished the duke even more, for the maid had already become attached to the creature within a day. At that moment, Albert began to say that judging by what the girl is doing now, it's easy for him to imagine how it could end, and if she doesn't let him go now, she'll regret it later. But Rosa replied that she wasn't sorry she'd met the dragon after all, and she'd do everything she could to make sure he survived. However, the prince was wondering what the girl will do when the dragon fails to awaken, or if he will eventually leave her, since the chance that he will survive is only one in many thousands. So Albert thinks it's foolish to enter into a deliberately doomed relationship. But the maid said it's not really like that, because it's stupid to end a relationship that hasn't even started yet, and happy memories will always be remembered. So she was sure she wouldn't leave Winter, and the chance of that dragon showing up here was also one in a thousand, but somehow she got lucky. Suddenly the protagonist realized that she'd probably hurt Albert's feelings, and she wondered if he wasn't going to execute her because he thought her words were too impertinent. When suddenly Albert agreed to her proposal, saying that she could do as she pleased, but the girl did not understand why the prince at first so strongly opposed. Suddenly, the prince stood up abruptly, and approaching the girl said that he would never have thought his maid could say such a thing. So touching her face, he said he'd be lying if he said he didn't, and he was really surprised. Suddenly, he asked Rose if she could cut his hair tonight. Because of his long hair on his neck, he was very hot, which shocked the girl, and she said in shock that she had never cut anyone's hair. Plus, 
there's an unspoken agreement in the evening that you can't go in each other's houses. But Albert looked the girl straight in the eye and smiled, and said there was nothing wrong with it, and she would just follow his instructions. Which shocked the girl even more as she realized that she had once again succumbed to his charms. As she walked down the stairs and took deep exhales and inhales, she even thought about practicing her stamina. Suddenly, Rose accidentally tripped and started to fall down the stairs, closing her eyes. She was ready to feel unbearable pain. But slowly opening her eyes, she did not understand why everything was so quiet. Looking up, she saw Albert in front of her who had managed to catch her, and in a calm voice asked the maid to be careful. The main character felt very strange when she was pressed against the prince's body, and she also felt a very pleasant scent coming from Albert's body. Coming close to the girl's ear, the prince asked her if she was okay, but the girl, instead of talking to the guy, normally just pushed him away and ran downstairs, thanking him for saving her. While in the kitchen and cooking, the protagonist felt unbearably hot, which was immediately noticed by Winter. But instead of agreeing that it was very hot, the girl gave a thumbs up and said that she was fine. Then the dragon started waving its little paws in the direction of the protagonist, saying that now it will be much cooler, to which the girl agreed, and said that now it is indeed cooler and very fresh. At that moment, all she wanted from the survey was a regular cell phone to take a picture of this cute animal and show other people how cute it was. Winter suddenly noticed that Rosa was cooking some strange dish and wondered what it tasted like. Eating it, he was amazed at the flavor. And with a smile on his face, he said it was delicious and he wanted more. At that moment, the main character was a bit surprised, as she didn't know that even dragons ate chicken. So she asked Winter to wait a bit, as she was going to take the food and come back right away. Smiling, she thought that there was no one among men who didn't like chicken. And Albert liked it too. Suddenly, the girl noticed the prince talking to someone. And hiding behind the door, she wanted to hear what Albert was saying. Meanwhile... The prince holding a magic wand was asking someone what he had said and asking them to repeat it. As it turned out, Albert was talking to his friends using this magic rod, and one of his friends told him that the king had ordered the village they were staying in to be burned down, and all the people living there were unfortunately killed. Also, all people think it's an accident, but those who support them are definitely not happy about what happened. Meanwhile, the girl who was outside the door was shocked by what she heard and didn't know how to react. Then she ventured into the room, where Albert immediately noticed the maid shivering, so he decided to see if she had a fever by any chance. But Rosa touched his arm and said it was okay. But Albert stated that her face showed that nothing was normal. Also, his conversation with his friend had gone on too long, and he didn't think that the main character could come over to his place. So getting close to her face, he asked her if she was really scared, to which I more replied that she was just surprised, as she didn't know the king was such a horrible person. Also, she the prince, why he wasn't angry. To which the guy replied that of course he was angry, but that wouldn't help here, and now was the time to think about expanding his influence. So the most elaborate revenge would be to get out of here, deal with Rostrath, and become king. After the hero talked about how much the king is a terrible man, they sat down to eat, and the principal was surprised that the food today is not spicy, to which the girl replied that it was very expensive to customize this dish, as it is rarely cooked. Also, the girl asked Bold to imagine how much she thinks of him, because if he likes the food she cooks, he'll give her more land and money, which surprised Albert a little. He didn't see what food had to do with expansion and her possessions, and it's all absurd. Noticing Albert trying to eat these chicken legs with a fork, Rose started laughing, saying that this dish is eaten with hands, because if you eat it with a fork... It's very uncomfortable. Eating and looking the prince straight in the eyes, Rose listened to him say that there were many outstanding cooks in the world, but there was no one who cooked as well as the protagonist. To which the girl replied that it's not really true, and if he looked hard enough, he could probably find someone who cooks just like her. Rose also wondered if this time Albert and Seoina would fall in love again. The main character reborn into the body of Rose also changed the original plot. But so Ina is a very smart and beautiful girl, and she will be able to make Albert a worthy party. Nor did the protagonist wonder what such a reserved and elegant prince could fall in love with. At that moment, Albert noticed that Rose was thinking about something. So he decided to ask her what she was thinking about, to which the girl replied that it was nothing important, and asked the boy if he had ever fallen in love with anyone. 
Albert was a little embarrassed, and he didn't understand why the maid would want to know that. But he still answered that he was in love. He was very young then, and his lover had beautiful big eyes. But after he said that, he stopped right away and said they should go back to eating, which surprised Rose. And she didn't understand why Albert would stop right now. Also looking at his face, the main thing I realized was that now he was happy and his mood had lifted. Night of that day, Albert was in his room praying, begging God to pacify this world and the souls of men unjustly sacrificed by Rostrathus. Suddenly, he noticed the wand was glowing, and when he picked it up, it appeared that his friend Liam wanted to contact him to tell him something important. Liam realized that Albert might be discouraged by today's news, but there was just one more thing he needed to tell him, to which the prince replied that everything was actually fine and asked his friend to take it easy and tell him what happened. Liam began to tell, first of all, about the situation with the magic tower. Namely, he made a list of mages who cast spells on the tower, and on sure about half of them, and now he's looking for the remaining ones. Liam also worriedly added that he thought the heroes would soon have to leave the tower for a while, which left the prince a little perplexed. That's when Albert realized it was really serious, and he understood. Also looking at the rod, his friend added that he would do his best to get Albert out of the tower in one piece, and as soon as he does, he'll get rid of that annoying maid, so he wants to do everything he can to make it happen. Albert was silent for a few seconds, and then he said he understood, but asked Liam not to worry about Rosa from now on. Because she wasn't as bad as he'd imagined, said the words, Albert suggested we call it a day. Liam was a little surprised at the prince's words, but he decided to listen to him and bowed to him to end the conversation. Putting the rod back on the table, Albertu reflected that when he was first transferred here and met the maid, then all he could think about was how to deal with her quickly after his release. But now it was as if Rosie was a different person altogether. And that's the reason why his feelings for her have changed so much. He also thinks that because it's just the two of them living in a small tower, maybe his mind has gone blank. Meanwhile, the protagonist was in her room quietly writing something on a piece of paper. As it turned out, she was writing a list of ways to help winter safely adult dragons, and the girl also thought that in order for the dragon to become strong, he should do what humans do. And first of all, you need to work on physical strength. That's when she realized she should start working out with Winter, but she only knows how to do breathing exercises. So she closed her eyes and wished she'd watched a couple of sports-related videos in her past life. Then she started to think of people around her who might have played sports. And that's when Albert came to mind. She promised herself that tomorrow morning she would ask him to tell her more about sports or even to help her with winter. However, the girl of course realizes that Albert just might not agree. The next day, Rose awoke early in the morning and slowly made her way downstairs towards Albert's. Suddenly, she was very surprised as she again saw Albert almost without clothes, so she felt very uncomfortable, blushing. She asked to train the dragon, since he's the only one who knows how to play sports. She explained that this is the first step in Winter's awakening into a dragon, namely the development of physical strength. But because she's so bad at sports, Rose decides to ask Albert to help her with it. Then the prince smiling the protagonist to the horror of a ruthless mistress as she is about to throw the baby dragon to the prince and run away. So Albert suggested to the girl what to do, namely the maid would train with them, and that was the only way Albert would be ready to help the baby. Rose got upset and asked Albert to just give her less of the earth, which the prince immediately rejected, and was about to decline the offer completely. However, the girl immediately stopped him, and yelling at him said that she loves sports and is ready to do it. Smirking, Albert said that they would train every day except weekends, and they would train together early in the morning. Besides, since it was already morning, they could start the first training session. When she heard that, the girl pretended to be excited, saying that she can't wait to start training, even though she doesn't really think she's qualified to do sports at all. When Albert was about to start training, Rose said it would be better to start tomorrow, as you can't skip breakfast. So running into the kitchen, she asked Albert to take care of the baby. While in the kitchen, the protagonist was glad she was able to avoid her first workout. Also reflecting, she realized she had told Albert she loved him. However, waving her hand, she suggested that she must have heard such a thing many times. Also, she hoped that he would understand her correctly. Today is also the day when the main character will cut Albert's hair. Even though she agreed to do it, 
she's afraid she'll mess it up. So she's been putting it off and practicing imagining she's cutting the prince's hair. Being in the same room with Albert, Rose noticed that he had finished his work and declared confidently that she was ready to start the haircut. Although in fact she realized that she wasn't ready at all. Looking at Albert's hair, Rose explained to him that his bangs had grown out a lot and must be in his eyes, so she suggested he cut his bangs too. Also waving my hand in front of my eyebrows, she said the length of the quad would be below my eyebrows. But Albert understood nothing, and seizing the girl by the arm, asked her to mark the length and show the... At that moment, the protagonist felt very uncomfortable and tried to calm herself down, assuring herself that she was just cutting his hair and she was glad that at least Albert couldn't hear her heartbeat now. Having finally realized how to cut the prince's hair, so the main thing to work on, and in a couple of minutes the new hairstyle was already ready, although it was not very different from the old one, Rose was also finally able to calm down, because during the whole process, she was very agitated and thought she was going to die. Besides, she didn't understand why Albert was staring at her for so long and thought she had done something wrong. Suddenly the prince seized the girl's hand and approaching her ear, asked if she would let him kiss her, which surprised Rosa a bit and she didn't even know how to react to it, so she just decided to keep quiet. Because the girl didn't answer anything, Albert decided that she didn't mind it and kissed her passionately, at the same time as the girl didn't understand why she could never refuse him. Having finally finished kissing, the prince called the maid simply amazing which made the girl think that Albert sees her as an uneasy maid, and he is an unusual prince before her, too. Then she started repeating in her mind that they should never fall in love. But because she could no longer contain her feelings, she asked Albert if he liked her. But the man, instead of answering, asked the girl to answer his question first, namely what she thought of him, to which the girl replied that she thought he was handsome, but it wasn't love. When Albert heard that, he got a little upset and froze. Then he decided to ask why Rosa had agreed to the kiss. At that moment, the protagonist bowed her head down and quietly replied that she just couldn't refuse. She also asked the guy to answer her question. Albert stated that he cared for Rose, although he didn't understand why. Hearing this, the protagonist was a little surprised and thought that he really liked her, but she also didn't understand why. In addition, Rose from the novel tried to subjugate Albert by looking the prince straight in the eye the main character asked him why he said that since he promised her that he would never fall in love with her, which the man agreed, adding that although it's strange, Rose is not the same as she used to be, and Albert is not used to unrequited love, and he promised the main character that he would do everything possible to make her love him. Then Rosa was left in complete shock and finally convinced that Albert really liked her. She looked at the wand and noticed that it was glowing again, so she told Albert that it looked like someone wanted to contact him. Trying to take the rod in his hands, Albert added that now he was definitely confessing his feelings to her. While the protagonist realized that now that they understood each other's feelings, there was no way she could pretend like she didn't understand anything anymore. Liam starts saying that Duke Mason was attacked by a dark mage. Also, the Duke is badly hurt, so Liam thinks Albert should see him in person. Looking at the protagonist... The prince admitted that although it might be a bit sudden, they'd have to go on a retreat. After a while, when all the heroes had changed, the protagonist, holding Winter in her arms, didn't understand how they could get out since there were guards outside. To which Albert turned away and replied that they would not go out the door, but would fly through the air, and he also asked the girl to follow him. When he got to the third floor, Albert started to use his magic wand, waving it and some small red lightning bolts started to come out from it, suddenly opened some strange portal that surprised the protagonist. At that moment, Albert held out his hand to the girl, they said, and it was worth confiding in him. Finally holding hands, they went through this portal and ended up on the roof of this tower. Rose was very happy that they had finally left the tower, and she didn't think it would be so easy to do that, looked up at the night sky. She was struck by the beauty for it had been a long time since she had admired the night sky and breathed fresh air. Also looking at Albert, Rosé didn't understand why he wasn't so happy since they were finally able to get out of this tower, to which the Duke replied that unfortunately nothing much had changed, and they must not stop and go on, and now they must teleport to Duke Mason who lives in the north. When she heard the Duke's name, Rosa was a little surprised, 
and suggested that the man must be very cold-blooded or handsome, and Albert agreed, adding that Mason was indeed quite popular with the girls. Also smirking, he asked the main character of Rushi to show interest in him and not to talk about other men at all. The nervous protagonist told the Duke that she now wanted to try teleporting as soon as possible, at which point Albert pulled out his magic wand and cast some kind of spell that they could levitate, which left the protagonist in shock. Smiling, she realized that she too could use this sulfur if she learned the spell. Besides, all the spells are not that complicated. However, Albert explained to her that spellcasting was just one way of manifesting magic, and if one could only conjure with words, everyone would be an archmage. Suddenly the prince noticed that it was a little dark outside and he needed to light the way, so he began to use another spell. However, he stopped abruptly, as if he felt some pain, which Rose immediately noticed, and asked how Albert was feeling. But the man replied that everything was fine, and they should first of all concentrate on their and the case. But Rose is not so easily fooled. Despite the prince straight in her eyes, she thought that something didn't seem to be all right, so she decided to ask again about his well-being. Finally coming down to earth, Albert began to use another spell to create a portal. He also explained to the girl that it is a magic circle, and in it all the power is concentrated. He also added that it is important whether enough energy is put into the circle and whether it is accurately depicted. Such a huge role is played by skills in casting spells. Finally did, the guy turned around and asked the girl to come over to him, which she promptly did. Being near the portal, Winter also began to feel some sort of strange feeling, as if he was being pulled in somewhere. In a moment, they were already north in front of Duke Mason's castle. Being in front of the huge gate, I didn't understand how there could be so much snow here, as it is definitely still springtime. Suddenly, knights appeared before them, who at once bowed before the heroes and saluted them. One of these knights was Baron Schubert Vergen, whom Albert had not seen for a long time. At the same moment, the prince at once asked, in what condition the duke was, to which the baron replied that he was seriously injured. At this point, the protagonist felt a little uncomfortable because no one cared about her at all, as if she wasn't even here. Suddenly, one of the knights gave the prince a fur jacket, which he put on Rosa, saying that it is very cold now, and her lips are blue, and instead of speaking, she just sits there and is silent. The knights were, it was just shocked and didn't even know how to react to it. At the same time, Albert, approaching his sweetheart's ear, whispered to her that if she wanted anything, she should speak at once and not be silent. Also placing his hand on the girl's shoulder, Albert is introduced to her knights, saying that they live together in the tower, and Rose is his faithful and devoted maid. Virgen was a bit surprised to hear that, as he remembers the main character being that annoying maid who was in league with the king and bullied the prince and now Albert claims she's loyal to him. Also, the guy immediately apologized and bowed to the girl. They say he's a bit distracted because of the situation with the Duke, so he didn't greet Rose properly. 